be talking about taxonomy. First of all, what is taxonomy? Well, taxonomy is a way of classifying similar objects into larger and larger groups. And so at the top will be domain and at the bottom will be species. So let me pull up my white screen. <gasps> In taxonomy, there's this thing, there's this thing called the hierarchy of taxa, which contain taxons, the singular form taxon. It is singular of taxa, and any and it is any type of group in the hierarchy of taxa. And there are a few taxons, which are domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. For a mnemonic, it is Dear King Philip came over for a great spaghetti. Now let's start with domain. There are three domains, domain archaea, domain eukaryotes, and finally, domain bacteria. For domain archaea, they are prokaryotic, that means only one cell. Its characteristic features are unicellular, has no nucleus, has plasmids, which are circular strands of DNA. They don't have membrane-bound organelles, DNA exists in circular chromosome, like I said before, but it has a histone protein. It has cell walls made of pseudopeptidoglycan, that's a long word, and it divides by binary fission. The ribosomes are smaller than eukaryotic ribosomes, but it also does have some features of a eukaryotic ribosome. Now for domain eukaryotes. As the name suggests, they are eukaryotic cells. Its characteristic features are the cells with a nuclear and a membrane-bound organelles, like human cells. DNA and nucleus are arranged in a linear chromosome with a histone protein, like human cells. The ribosome size is 80S, which is basically the unit. It divides by mitosis. Chloroplast and mitochondrial DNA is in a circular chromosome. Also, there are a great diversity of forms, meaning there can be unicellular and multicellular and colonial organisms. Interesting. And it also reproduces sexually or asexually. And finally, domain bacteria. They are prokaryotic, of course, and the characteristic features are unicellular, only has one cell, no nucleus, and DNA exists in a circular chromosome, like the one up there and up there too. And this time it doesn't have histone proteins. It has plasmids, which are circular DNA. It has no membrane-bound organelles. And the size of the ribosome is 70S, which is smaller than prokaryotic cells. It has a cell wall made of that long thing called pseudopeptidoglycan and it divides by binary fission. Now, moving on to kingdom. There are four kingdoms. Kingdom Protoctus, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Plantae, and Kingdom Animalia. First of all, Kingdom Protoctus. It is eukaryotes that are not a fungus, plant, or animal. They are eukaryotic and mostly single cell. Some have animal cells with no cell wall and are sometimes known as protozoa. But some have plant-like cells with cellulose walls and chloroplasts and are sometimes known as algae. Now for kingdom fungi. Fungi are mushrooms or mold or yeast and all that nasty stuff. They are eukaryotic and have some similar properties to plants but they are not able to photosynthesize. So they use heterotrophic nutrition. That means they use organic compounds, like people. They reproduce by spores and have a simple body, simple body form. Their cell walls are made of chitin or other substances. They don't have cilia or flagella, unfortunately. And they also use saprotrophic nutrition. Now for Kingdom Plantae, 
which is all the beautiful and glorious and deadly plants in the world. They are multicellular eukaryotes. They have chlorophyll and are able to photosynthesize. They have vacuoles to support them and are autotrophic, means they can make food for themselves. And they have cell walls made of cellulose. And finally, Kingdom Animalia, all of the beautiful, glorious, deadly animals. They are multicellular eukaryotes. Heterotrophic, they don't have cell walls and they communicate using a nervous system which is an interesting topic that I will expand on later. They sometimes have cilia or flagella and have vacuoles, but they're small and temporary. I'm going to skip over phylum, class, order, family, and genus because if I go over those, there will be way too much material to cram into one video. So I'll just skip over to species. Species is a group of interbreeding organisms that have the same adaptation and lifestyle. So there are two things that hold a species together, which is interbreeding and adaptation. Interbreeding is if a group of a certain species breeds with a member of the same species. That is what interbreeding is. And adaptation is the ability of a certain organism to change internal and external components to better fit its environment. And if a species has a different adaptation, it is considered a different part of the species. So there are species, subspecies, and sub-subspecies. Oh, there's one more important thing. In plants, replace the phylum with division. Thanks for watching today's video. Bye-bye.